Hi, it's Dr. Alan Yim. In this video, I'm going to give a little demonstration of direct modulation using a piece by Scott Joplin. So, Joplin wrote in the late 19th century and early 20th century. You probably know um, his ragtime, but this is a slower piece that he wrote titled Solace. And much like the romantic style you can see here, it says Mexican Serenade. Looks like maybe this guy isn't so happy. And the piece does have a slight sad feel to it. And solace, of course, means, you know, you're consoling the person. So maybe things didn't go so well between these two. And the opening. Now, what's interesting about this is it starts in the key of C. So Joplin seems to like major keys. He only has, uh, he has very few sections in minor. And even pieces like this, which might be considered to be somewhat on the sadder, more melancholic side, are still in major. So there's another rag called Wall Street rag. Also starts out sadly, but it is also in major. Okay. So here we are, C major, C major, and then here, a little bit of a hint of where we may be headed because this section. There's a minor chord, okay. So there, um, you might notice this in. Okay, but this is not the topic that we are concerned with right now. We want to see where this goes and where it modulates to the new key. So I'm going to skip forward a little bit. And since it's in C, it's kind of easy, maybe a little bit. Well, I say that, but now I notice he has a lot of chromatic inflections, and this is typical for him. But let's go to the end of this third section here. So, this is a repetition of the opening. Okay, second system. And a 5-1. Now. Okay, so here, that's it. That's the modulation. So there really isn't any kind of preparation. There's no common chord. It's just the end of one phrase, this, and then five, one. And from that point on, it's in the key of D. And you might say, well, how do you know? Well, I just look at the key signature there, one flat. It's in the key, did I say D? It's in the key of F. From that point to the end, and I'll just kind of scroll down so you can see, right? So you can, whoops, and remove this. All right, interesting. I'm kind of stuck here. I can't really get, all right, sorry. I can't get to the bottom of that page. Um, but trust me, it ends in F, and I'll play the ending for you. But let's go back to this spot here. Play here again. Now you might be thinking, what's the relationship between these two keys? F is the subdominant of C, and he does do this in some other pieces, but it's not really the norm for that you would expect, maybe. And it also, uh, we don't expect the piece to end in a new key. We expect it to go back to the starting key, but many of his pieces don't do this. So. Okay, 
This next section is almost like an introduction to the Every single little harmonic thing in here but let's go to the last bit so you can see how this this story ends so and then it goes oops let's see it here so this is the second ending If you ever do play any of his rags, um, don't leave out the repeats because it kind of messes up the form. So I, I think uh, you should play all of the repeats when you perform his music. And it really is great. There's so many little details in it. Um, I've really grown to like his music a lot. So um, that's it for this video. I hope that explains a little bit about the rectum modulation. So again, some things to keep in mind. This is a completely unprepared type of modulation. One phrase ends in one key, and the next phrase begins in the new key. Sometimes it's called, in fact, phrase modulation. All right, thanks for watching.